Amen. Well, Father, we just thank and praise you for victory in every battle. And no matter what, Father God, we are surrounded by your love. We're surrounded by your grace. We're surrounded by your presence, your protection. No matter what it looks like, Father, we thank and praise you that you are here with us, keeping us, watching over us, giving us your joy, your peace. And we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise for victory in Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, you are welcome into this place. We pray for those who are here, for those who are online. And we thank you that there is no time or distance in the spirit, and we are blessed. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for the victory. Glory to God, the victory that we have on today. And we thank and praise you for it. May this word be a lamp unto our feet. May it be a light unto our path, showing us the way, the way to success, the way to victory, the way to overcome the way to have nothing missing, not lacking, or broken in any area. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. Amen. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise wherever you are. Amen. Praise God. Well, welcome to World Changes Church Houston. For those who are here and for those who are online, we welcome you. What a great day to join in and be a part of this message. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open them up with me to John chapter 16, verse 33. John 16, 33. We won't be here before you too long. We want to start a message tonight, and it's called, It's Out of Your Hands. I'll say that again. It's called, It's Out of Your Hands. Amen. John chapter 16, verse 33 this is Jesus talking. We're looking at the New, the New Living Translation. It says, I have told you all this so that you may have what? Peace in me. He said, here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart. Why? He said, because I have overcome this world. He said, I have overcome this world. Let's look at the Amplified, same scripture Verse 33, he said, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. He said, in me you'll have perfect peace. He said, in the world you will have tribulation and distress and suffering, but be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with, what have we been talking about? Joy. Why? Why would I be filled with joy? Because joy comes from what you know. And what do you know? You know that he says, I have overcome the world. Even though there may be tribulations, even though there may be distress, even if they're suffering, I'm at peace and I have joy because I know that my God has already overcome this world. So like the song says, it may look like I'm surrounded, but the fact is I'm surrounded by his peace. The fact is, I'm surrounded by his joy. The fact is, I have nothing to worry about. Why? Because it's out of my hands. I don't know if you guys remember that. Um, I don't know if it was a TikTok or something, uh, but it was a video that was out not too long ago where this, this uh, customer service person or this employee was talking to a customer, and the customer was like, hey, come on, give me another chance and let me do this. And the, and the, the guy said, it's above me now. There's nothing I can do about it. It's above me now. I, I tried to help you, but, but I can't pay no more attention to this. Why? Because it's out of my hands. It's, it's above me now. I need you to understand that no matter what's going on in your life, it's above you now. Christ has already taken it. He's already taken care of it. It's out of your hands. Somebody say that with me. It's out of my hands. So be confident. Be undaunted. Be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. What does that mean? My conquest is accomplished. Jesus said, I came and did what I came to do. What does that mean? My victory is abiding. That means that his, his victory is still ongoing. My conquest is accomplished. My victory is abiding. It is, as he said on the cross, finished. Jesus overcame the world 
And because of that, you and I don't have to worry. It's out of our hands because it was nailed to the cross. It was nailed to his hands. And I, and I, and I saw something when I received that part of this message from the Lord. When his hands were nailed and that blood began to be shed and the side was pierced and the feet was pierced and the blood began to be shed and we, we all talk about and teach the fact that his blood washed away our sins. I literally saw the image of Jesus' nails being hand, uh, sorry, his hands being nailed and him taking our sin, him taking our shame, him taking all of that upon himself and because he took it, guess what? It's not for you and I to hold on to any longer. It's out of your hands because it was nailed to his. I'll say that again. It's out of your hands because it was nailed to his. He did the work. He became the sacrifice. And his blood cleansed you from all unrighteousness. His blood delivered you. His blood saved you. Somebody say, it's out of my hands. Let's go to John chapter 20, verse 19. John 20, 19. Uh, let's look at verse, yeah, let's look at verse 19. And let's go back to the New Living Translation real quick. This is where Jesus appeared to his disciples. He says, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. Now, why were they afraid of the Jewish leaders? Well, Jesus had just been crucified. And they were like, wait, we, we, we his boys, and they're going to be hunting us down next. Suddenly, it says Jesus was where? Standing there with them. Now, the, 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 the crucifixion had happened. The burial had happened. He had now been resurrected, and now he's walking around town, as he said he would. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there with them, and guess what he said? Peace be with you. Now remember, and I think it was in 14, he had said, my peace I'm going to give to you, my peace I'm going to leave with you. Now he showed up and said, peace be with you. Peace be with you. There's nothing for you to worry about. Nothing for you to be fearing from God. You can be secure of your salvation. Why? Because peace is with you. The same peace that I said I was going to leave to you has now shown up. And then, it's, and then he said, as he spoke, what did he do? Read this with me. He showed them the wounds, where? In his hands and in his side. Why do you think he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side? He said, peace be with you, but he said, also, I want to show you some physical proof of why peace can be with you. If this thing ain't a joke, I, I'm showing back up physically, so you ain't got to just believe in theory. I'm showing you for real that my hands did the job. I'm showing you for real that my blood has done the job. So again, there's nothing for you to worry about. There's nothing for you to hold on to. Why? Because I've done all the work. If you agree with that, say amen. And then it said, what happened when they saw that? They were filled with joy. There we go again. Why were they joyful? Because they knew, not just only by what he said, but now by what they're seeing, they knew, wait a minute, he literally did it. I'm free, I'm forgiven, all is well in my life because of what Jesus did. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, what? Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then what did he do? He breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And in that moment, they were saved. Well, with evidence, I'll, I'll say it that way, because they were saved when he died and was resurrected. But they received the evidence by receiving the Holy Spirit. Now God literally lives in them. Up until that point, Jesus was with them, God was with them, but now God is in them. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God could not be in them until there was peace made, though. And that's what the hands and the side and him going up on the cross and all that was about. He had made peace between God and man, and now God said, I can now move in. 
The house had to be clean before he could move in. The house had to be made ready before he move, could move in. And when Jesus did what he did, it made everybody on earth able to receive the Spirit of God. But I think it's very interesting that he's telling them, peace be with you, peace be with you. You're now able to receive. But then they had to position himself to receive. Because the whole world didn't receive the Holy Spirit at that moment, did they? It was those who were focused on Jesus. It was those who were in his presence. It was those who were willing to believe were therefore able to receive. Then he breathed on them. Then he breathed on them. Are you in a position and posture where, where God can breathe on you? Are you where he told you to be? Are you where he can find you? Or are you running away from him? Because think about where they were at. They were hiding. They weren't like just sitting in a synagogue in a church or whatever like that. They were hiding, but guess what? When Jesus showed up, they didn't run the other way. No, they honored his presence. And they stayed right where he was at, and they received from him. When you understand that this stuff is out of your hands, you'll be willing to sit in the presence of God. This is what the Holy Spirit is telling me right now. And there's a lot of Christians that are not staying still so that God can minister to them or breathe on them and they're instead running away from Jesus. They're running away from God. They're running away from the things of God. And then when he starts speaking and, and talking and giving out, they're unable to receive. Not because he's not giving it out. It's because they're not there. And thank God, even though the disciples were in hiding, at least they were there. Where is your there that he's called you to be? Where is your there that he told you to be? Because that's where he's going to show up. And when he shows up, he's going to come with everything you need. He's going to come with your peace. But if you're concerned about this and concerned about that and you're holding on to all this other stuff, you will not be where he needs you to be. So that's why you got to get this stuff out of your hands. You got to get it out of your hands so that you're free to receive from him. If you understand that, say amen. So he said, again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you then he breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit. Then he said, if you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. Let's go to um, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15. So here you're seeing that Jesus said, I've overcome the world. He did that by being made the perfect sacrifice for us, for overcoming sin and then death. And he gave us the victory and then he gives us this peace. And then you see the disciples receive the Holy Spirit. They're now literally the temple of God. So one would think at this point, Christians have everything they need. I know that sounds kind of simple, but think about it. If you got God, what else do you need? But yet we still live a daily life where cares and concerns come our way and we find ourselves picking those things up and holding on to them. And I want you to remember this scripture any and every time sin, shame, concern, fear, worry, anything tries to throw itself into your hands and tries to get you to keep it and hold on to it. Remember these scriptures. Hebrews 4.15, it says, this high priest, somebody say that's Jesus. This high priest of ours understands our weakness. For he faced all the same testings we do, what does that end say? Yet he did not sin. Goes back to John 16, 33. He said, I overcame all of that. I did the work. I took care of sin. I did the work. So you didn't have to. I took care of shame. I took care of sickness. I took care of all those things. He was faced with all that stuff yet he did not sin. Verse 16. Because he did that, verse 16 becomes what we can do. So let us come how? Boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Let me get this real quick. Now, when most of us 
come to God, we come to God carrying cares. We boldly come <laughs> with cares. My finances. Lord, I hear. Baby need a new pair of shoes. Light bill due. Rent due too. I'm coming boldly before your throne of grace. Wait, wait, wait. You forgot verse 15 though. Go back to 15. Jesus took care of it. You forgot John 16, 33. He already overcame financial issues. You forgot in John when he said, I've given you peace. So when you get to Hebrews 4, 15, and you're coming with these cares and concerns, you're coming with something in your hands that shouldn't even be there. I thought his hands took it when they were nailed on the cross. Oh, oh well, Pastor Archie, okay, I get what you're saying about, about the cares and concerns of this world, but what about sin? I thought his blood washed you. I thought you were forgiven. Because many of us, we come, we come to, to God with, oh, Lord, I'm just this no good, dirty sinner. No, you're not. You're saved by grace. So yet he did not sin. Verse, go back to 16. So let us come boldly to the throne of grace or of our gracious God. There we will receive what? His mercy. And we will find grace to help us when we need it most. When we need it most. You know where you need the help most is to believe in the finished works of Jesus. I mean, I know this also applies to, you know, you're going through stuff and, and you're going to need him to help you get through, but I, I, I firmly believe it's to help you get through to the point of believing that he's already taken care of all of this. I mean, I mean, really, Lord, help me with my family. Did he, did he not already bless you concerning your family? Help me with my relationships. Help me to be successful. I'm coming boldly to your throne of grace. I need you to be bold enough to believe that Jesus has already taken care of all that. And so that when you come boldly to the throne of grace, if anything, it's just to cast your cares on him. Teresa, come here real quick. Uh, because, because there's so many Christians walking around like this. So many walking around like this. Lynn, can I borrow you real quick? Lynn, like I was not about to be on camera. <laughs> There's so many people walking around like this. And Teresa's going to be God. Lynn's the world. <laughs> she said, of course. <laughs> and there are so many people walking around. And then God says, I want you to be fruitful. I want you to love. I want you to give. I want you to do whatever. But we're walking around with all our cares. But, but, but Lord, I, I, I need to work on being successful. I'm in my prayer closet, and I'm trying to learn how to be more successful. I'm trying to learn how to be successful in my relationships. I'm trying to learn uh, how to uh, or, or receive the blessing in my finances. And we're so concerned about this that Jesus is already taken care of that guess what? These hands can't be used to be a blessing because I'm still holding on. I'm still holding on to this other stuff. I'm not willing to trust him. He said he was finished. He said he took care of it, but I'm, I, 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 I know, Lord, but I'm going to boldly come before you and say, help me with this. And you know what God's saying? What is that that you're even holding? My son took care of that. When he was on the cross, he took care of that stuff. So fight the good fight of faith and trust in what he did. And when those, somebody says, Archie, that sounds good, but I still, I still got cares. I still got concerns. What am I supposed to do with them? I'm so glad you asked. Y'all hang out right there for one second. Turn to Psalms 55, 22. Where my Psalms go? I'm tripping. <laughs> Psalms 55, 22. And yeah, let's take the New Living Translation. It says, give your burdens to who? Give your burdens to who? 
And what is he going to do? He will take care of you. He will not, somebody said that's a promise. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. So let's say, I don't want you to be condemned now if you're coming to the throne of grace with all your stuff. But what am I supposed to do when I get to the throne of grace? I'm supposed to take these things and give them to God. It's out of my hands. It's out of my hands. And when it's out of my hands, guess what these hands can do now? I can go and be a blessing to somebody else. But if I'm walking around, no, Lord, I, I, can't, I can't do that, but I'll still go minister to the land. What am I doing? I'm taking me and all my mess <laughs> into the life of somebody else. I got enough of her own. And she got enough of her own. <laughs> No, what God is saying is, is first of all, trust Jesus. Trust that he's taking care of it. Become carefree by allowing what he did to be enough. But if you still struggle in that, cast those cares, put those burdens onto the Lord. And it says he will take care of you. Let me show you this in two places. First uh, Peter, go to 1 Peter 5, 7. 1 Peter 5, verse 7, we'll hang out in the New Living Translation. He says, Give all your worries <laughs> and cares to who? Why? Because he cares for you. And listen, God's not playing volleyball with you. He's not like, hey, you take him back because you know what? You sinned the other day and you deserve to have these back. And you're like, oh, Lord, please, 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 please heal me. No, no, because you didn't give enough in tithes and offerings. So now you take them burdens back. Oh, Lord, please bless me. No, you take that back because you didn't go to church yesterday. Oh, Lord, please save me. No, you had a margarita yesterday, so you're going to just, you're, you know, die and go to hell. <laughs> you don't know, he's, he, he, he's, he's when, he, when you give it to him, he cares for you. He got it. Now, you got a choice. I said before your life and death, blessings and curses, choose life. But the enemy gets to talking to some of us. You know you're not really saved. You know you're not really blessed. And you know what we do? We go right back. Based on our feelings and emotions, we take back the very burden that Jesus already bore. And then as time goes on, this becomes your new focus. No longer the lost, no longer the world, no longer the mission or the reason he's called you because all I can see is what's in front of me. And even though I want to be used by God, I can't because it's in my hands. Whatever that it is, it's in your hands and I need your hands free is what God is saying to you. I wrote it down this way. When you cast your cares upon God, you are care what? Yeah, when I cast my cares on God, I'm carefree. Do I have cares? No. Why? I gave them to him. Some of you need to meditate on that and let that really sink in. When you go to God and say, Lord, I'm giving this to you, I need you to start declaring, I am now care free. You get the care out of your hands, reminding yourself that his hands have already done the work and his blood has already done the washing. So if his blood has done the washing and his hands have done the work, you are care free. Somebody say it's out of my hands. Thank y'all so much. All right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and that's the thing. We, we have to become careful. We can talk to the end of time about go ye to all the world and preach the gospel and everything like that. But how many of you guys know it's really difficult to go out and be a witness when I got all these issues and cares in my life? And the number one way to become carefree is to realize Jesus has already done it all. So, to stay free of the cares that the world tries to bring your way, here's what you need to do. Number one, control what you can control. 
Control what you can control. Now, this is real practical. There's so much stuff that happens that you think you can control, but you can't control it. You can't control what people say about you. You can't control what people think about you. You can't control what they're trying to do with gas, what they're trying to do with this, what they're trying to do with that. So what, what can I control? You know what I can control? I definitely can control what I, can, what I believe. I definitely can control being obedient to what God said. Let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verse 13. Philippians 3, 13, it says, No, dear brothers and sisters, I have what? Not achieved it. I have not yet got to the goal. I've, I've not accomplished it yet, but I do what? I focus, somebody say focus, on this one thing. Forgetting the past. I can't control what happened in the past. And looking forward to what lies ahead. What has God told you to do? Where is Jesus? He's in front of me because I'm following him. Forgetting the past. I can't control it. Looking forward. I can control these eyes. I can control my focus. And what lies ahead what am I doing? I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. I can only control what I can control. And I'm in this race, and all I can control is where this focus is, where my eyes are at, and the fact that I'm following him because I believe in where he's taking me. Anything else, I ain't worried about it. Because the moment I get to looking at something else, I'm going to be picking up cares, and I'm going to trip and fall. Number one thing is just control what you can control. Stay focused on Jesus. Stay in the race and keep moving ahead. If you understand that, say amen. Number two, go to Psalms 23, 4. Number two, if you want to stay carefree, reject worry. Reject worry. You do know worry is going to show up, right? But you don't have to let worry in. Just because it knocks doesn't mean you have to let it in. Worry cannot hurt the believer who will not let it in. Verse 4 says, even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Why? For you are close, not behind me, beside me. Let me bring that up to date. Even when I walk through the darkest alley, <laughs> you ever been in a dark alley in the inner city before? Yeah, yeah, he, he make you nervous. <laughs> I'm, I'm still not afraid. Why? Because I got God with me. So I'm going to reject worry. I'm not going to get into panic and fear of what could happen. Why? Because I know I have the greatest defender, the greatest protector, the greatest provider right here with me. So even though it's dark, even though I'm in an alley, or even though I'm in a valley, a low place, guess what? He's with me. And then it says, your rod and your what? Staff do what? Protect and comfort me. Somebody say, it's out of my hands. You notice it didn't say your rod and your staff you give to me. Why? He needs you carefree. He doesn't even need you concerned with your own protection. He doesn't even need you concerned with your own comforting. He says, that's out of your hands. That's my job. My job is to protect you. My job is to comfort you. Turn that over to me and be carefree. Your rod and your staff, they protect and comfort me. If I'm going to stay carefree, i got to reject worry. Number three, if I'm going to reject, sorry, if I'm going to stay free from cares, I also have to recall his promises. Go to Psalms 91. I have to recall his promises. And for the sake of time, I'm going to give you number four. Number four is I have to rest in his promises. Psalms 91, verse 1, it says, Actually, I'm going to read this in uh, King James. 
In the King James, it says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. And remember, anytime you see shall or will, that's a promise, right? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I'm protected. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid by the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. Somebody say, that's me. A thousand shall fall by thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but what? It shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord. You've made the decision which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. You've made him the place that you dwell. You made him the place that you live. You've trusted him enough that you've moved into him and said, this is where I stay. There shall no evil befall thee. There shall no evil befall thee. Where? In him. Now, if I get out of him and I pick up those cares and concerns, is there still a safe place for me? Yes, I just stepped out of it. Stay in him. How do I stay in him? Continue to trust him and stay carefree. How do I stay carefree? Cast those cares on him. Because there, here, shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Makes perfect sense, huh? Why? Because can't no plague come into the house of God. Hmm? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's, there's liberty, there's freedom, there's healing, there's health, there's, there's everything. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, so wherever he is, that's where I'm going to be. I'm pressing towards the mark. I'm following where, where he's got me going. I'm not getting out of step or out of line with him because this is the safe place. And the way I do that is I stay carefree. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. So I'm in step with him. I'm following him. He's my dwelling place. And I got angels. And I got angels. How are we going to lose with Jesus, Holy Spirit, God, and angels? It's out of my hands. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their, look at it, in their what? Y'all, y'all get to the next one. They shall bear thee up in their what? In their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Again, it's out of my hands. I'm in their hands. Verse uh, 13. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and dragon shalt thou trample under feet because he hath set his love upon me. God says, therefore I will deliver him because he trusted me, because he set his love upon me. He, how do I know I've set my love upon God? I've cast my cares on him because I believe his word. To, you say you love God, but, but if you really believe him, you'll give him what he told you to give him. We say we love God, but then we say, I don't trust you enough to deal with this, though. I don't trust the hands of Jesus. I don't trust the holes in his hands. I don't trust the blood enough because uh, I, I still see this stuff. No, you got to understand that there's two different realms. One is the spirit. One is the natural. You may be seeing things in the natural, but it's already done in the spirit. And you got to make a decision. I trust you. I believe you. I love you. So I'm going to obey you because he, we set our love upon him. He will deliver us and set us on high because we 
know his name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. Whatever that trouble, I will be with him in trouble. My blood is with him in trouble. My son is with him in trouble. My power is with him in trouble. My angels are with him in trouble. My protection, my provision, my comfort are with you in trouble. That's what God is saying. And I will deliver him, you, and honor him. With long life, God is saying he will satisfy you and show you his salvation. If I want to be carefree, I got to control what I can control. I got to reject worry. I got to recall his promises. And then I have to rest in his promises. Nothing should be in our hands so that the Father can actually put into our hands what he wants us to have for his kingdom purpose. Our hands should be empty, carefree, ready to be used by God. Our mouths should also be empty of any negative words of worry, doubt, or fear. And instead, they should be full of thanksgiving and praise. Why? Because there's nothing to fear. We're at peace. So we might as well rejoice because Jesus has already overcome this world. It's above you now <laughs> and it's out of your hands. So you might as well take those hands and raise them up. Showing God that I'm carefree. From here on out, when you raise your hands, it's a sign of surrender, but it's also a sign of showing God. I'm carefree. I'm carefree, Lord. I love you. I trust you. I depend on you. These hands, this life depends on you. And I give you praise that all is well. No matter what it looks like. No matter what it feels like. I remind myself of your promises. I rehearse those promises. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the fact angels are surrounded, rounded about me and my children. Angels are protecting my household. Angels watch over me that you have sent to keep me in all my way. Let something try to trip me up. I trust you, Lord. And I depend on you. That should be the cry of our heart. So, so we are no longer afraid. Let's, let's sing a little bit of that, Teresa. Yeah. Just worship him. Just close your eyes and raise those hands. Yes. Glory to your name. I'm no longer afraid fear I am a child of God Say it again I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer Father, we just thank you today that we are free from fear. And we've cast every care on you. And we pray tonight that we remain carefree as we meditate on this word. Meditate on the finished works of Jesus. Meditate on the fact that grace has saved us. And we'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise for that victory that Jesus won with the evidence of the holes in his hand and in his side. 
We believe you, Lord. And we say we're free in Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. Now, while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you're out there and you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat after me, dear Heavenly Father. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. I believe that his blood was shed for me. Grace has saved me, and today I am born again. I am free in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise for that. If you pray that prayer for the very first time, then what I want you to do is I want you to take a look at your screen and give us a call at 281-463-0700, or you can email us at WCCH at WCCHouston.org. We praise God for you and thank God for the decision that you've made. Know that your life will never be the same again, and we thank God for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, real quick before we go, um, we're going to do our offering uh, in just a moment. But Pastor Melissa, you come on up if uh, God laid something on your heart. Uh, yes. Um, first of all, um, this message was awesome. Praise God. Uh, it's just confirmation of what God had been showing me. Um, a couple of years ago, my brother-in-law's here, and I don't even think he knows this. My brother-in-law and my sister, I don't even think he knows this. Um... But when their oldest daughter, Journey, was born, well, was being born, we were all at the hospital, and um, everything was going great. She came out great, and then all of a sudden you see the whole room shift, and she wasn't breathing, and it was like this, almost like a slow motion that happened, like it went from that, yay, she's born, ha, woohoo, congratulations, to this slow motion, like everybody looked at each other, and then they just like this unspoken thing was happening and they went into a whole different direction that everybody started moving. People were coming up, coming in and they were, you know, getting us out of the room. And so we were in the lobby outside of the room and uh, we were praying as a family. Like there was another family and they were celebrating and we were praying as a family. Um, and I remember like we prayed and then we like separated because everybody was going to go call their churches. Um, like my parents were going to go call their pastors. Uh, my sister was going to call her pastor. Um, and, and so I remember I could see the concern and the worry on my, on my mom's face. Um, and in my spirit, it came out. All, all that came out was because was, she was going to call her pastors. I know she was going to say, pastors, please pray for you know, journey, this is what's happening, et cetera, et cetera. But I could see the concern and the worry on her face. And in my spirit, it came, it just came up and said, and, and it's like Holy Spirit was saying, tell her, go with what you know. And so I just said, she, she turned around to get on the phone. I said, mom, go with what you know. And she got, it like kind of jarred her out of her, whatever she was thinking and in, in the midst of doing. And I said, mom, we know the word, go with what you know. And that's exactly what you preached here, uh, preached tonight, babe. Um, sorry, I called you babe. <laughs> Not that that's a big deal, but I, I don't think I've ever called you babe on stage. But, um, you know, just what you're saying in, in, in just when that happened, I think Journey's like seven, nine, nine now. So like nine, uh, from that point on, God has shown me this whole time that when something has come up, when we have faced something, um, trials and tribulations or, or, or just different things, situations in our, our life, that has always come back to my spirit of going with what you know. We know the word. We know that the things that concern us, he's going to perfect. We know, uh, you know, we gave a, the testimony a couple of months ago uh, about our daughter in, you know, when the shooting happened and I remember the Holy Spirit because I was asking the Holy Spirit I said the Holy Spirit why wasn't I woken up to pray why wasn't you know this and why wasn't that I had a like a list of questions I remember telling my sister I was like I have like four or five questions I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit and so that was one of, one of the questions I asked and and he told me I heard him clear as day he said 
I didn't need your help. He said, because when, because I had prayed a prayer, he said, when you prayed that prayer, you believed me. So he said, I, uh, he specifically said, I took you at your word because you took me at mine. And when he said that, like, I mean, it rocked my whole world. First of all, because I heard that from him. And second of all, like, he believed me because I believed him. Mm. And that's what you're saying tonight in this is believe his word. And he'll, he'll take us at our word when we believe him at his word. So, listen, I'm going to listen to this tomorrow. Usually, I'll catch it, you know, I'll be here on Sunday and then Wednesday. I usually catch it the next day. I'm definitely going to catch this because I have, so, man, I was writing, trying to take so many notes down. But I'm going to watch it again tomorrow because it's just a good reminder of, yeah, we know it. Yes, we know the word. Yes, we know who Holy Spirit is. Also, too, he knows the world we live in, things that come up against us. And I was telling somebody, one of the members one day, and I was saying, look, because she was having a hard time. She, she felt like a failure because she was getting in doubt and she was fearing. And I was like, look, I was like, forget all that. God, at, in, at the end of the day, God knows your heart. So remind yourself of the word that is in, in you and who you are. And he... We'll take you at your word because you're going to take him at his word. So go with what you know. Those things come boldly through his, the, to the throne of grace and say, look, this is what's happening. Throw that ball, so to speak. Cast that care on him because he can't, because he will take care of it for you because he cares for you. And so, gosh, that was such a good message. I, yeah, thank you. Amen. Yeah, Let's give God praise for that. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So go, go with what you know, and then you trust God. I'm saying I love what Pastor Melissa was saying about you know when he says, he when she said he that he told her, I'll take you at your word because you're taking me at mine. You know he's he's just waiting on us to trust him. You know, and then we have authority on earth, and when you take that authority and then you stand on it, don't don't change it, don't take it back. You know, you know what I'm saying? Once you say, Lord, I am healed. He says, all right, I'll take you at your word. Don't say, ooh, I think I got COVID-19 now. You know, or whatever. Don't, don't take it back. You, don't leave it with him. Leave it with him. Because even if that's what you were diagnosed, you, you are healed and you will be healed. And you are healed and you will see the manifestation. So that's, that's what you do in every single area of your life. Thank you, Pastor Melissa, for that. That was a blessing. Amen. Well, uh, before we go, if, if you um, uh, want to trust God with your giving, then you can do so by opening up a new text. If you're here locally, you can give by text or give um, with the offering envelopes that are in front of you. Text the word give to 281-603-2888. Uh, text give, put a space, and then whatever amount God is leading you to uh, give. Um, for instance, if it's 50, as it says on your screen, you could do give 50. Uh, you can also send your gifts to our address here at 7934 Highway 6 North. Houston, Texas, 77095. So and I think you can even use the QR code. But again, the number to text to give is 281-603-2888. Uh, Father, we just thank and praise you for the gifts that are uh, being sown, the tithes, the offerings. Just They're just acts of worship. Father, saying we trust you more than anything else. And so we sow today and give for the furthering of your word in the kingdom of God for the furthering of your word in this world. And we're careful to give you all the glory, honor, and praise for the victory that it brings about in the lives of others. In Jesus' name. If you agree with that, say amen. Come on, say amen. Were you blessed today? Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Well, go ahead and stand to your feet as we prepare to be dismissed. And remember, is it in your hands? No, somebody say it's out of my hands. <laughs> Amen. Father, we thank you for this word that we've heard, and we thank you as we leave this place. We go in grace now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present your faultless, glory to God, before the almighty God. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forever. Be carefree this week. Cast it on him when it tries to jump on you, and trust him, and know that you've won the victory because he's already overcome the world. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We love you guys so much. We'll see you on Sunday. You are dismissed. Uh.